go. All right, everyone. It's been a while. I haven't done my podcast for a while, but uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Uh, we're gonna be talking about Las Vegas. My guest today uh, has been a DJ for years. In fact, he DJed at one of my festivals. I think he either was San Francisco or uh, Reno. Uh, but uh, his name is Jose Malavi, but he goes by DJ Suave Beat. Now he used to live in Florida, but now he has been making big splash in Las Vegas. Uh, please welcome. Uh, Suave Beats, how are you, sir? Hey, hello, everybody. Honored to be here. Very excited. Shout out to everybody in Orlando and everybody in Las Vegas. Yeah, you used to live in Orlando, right? Yes, yes. I was I was living first in Jacksonville. Um, did a couple years there, and that's where I started originally uh, with the DJing um, with a with a fantastic uh, school over there called Dan Sounds of Jacks. Yeah, which which are actually the ones that that uh, got me to go to your to my first ever Congress, which was the Reno Congress you did back in 2011. I that see. was my yeah. first time. Yeah, I, I did. I did a performance with them. And uh, and yeah, and that that uh, that actually opened my eyes to the Congress world. Oh, yeah, back, man. Back then, so, yeah. Yeah. But you're originally from Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yes, I was uh, raised in Calle, Puerto Rico, up in the mountains, way up there. Man, no, uh, never really asked is like how how is like how is it like in Puerto Rico when it comes to social dancing? Is it just salsa? Well, the years I was over there since it was pretty much 1990 until 2004. Yeah. Um, nothing was nothing specifically was called dance social. It, it's just a way of life, right. pretty much. Um, the music that uh, most of you that that are not from the Caribbean or hasn't been raised in the, in, in in this music and the islands, um, right? yeah, the bachata, salsa, merengue, all that good stuff. Um, pretty much, you you grew up listening to it. It's everywhere. You hear it blasting out through the windows of every house, every car, gas stations. <laughs> yeah, gas stations, uh, colmadito. You yeah. know. Yeah. La Lechonera, all those places, it's it's everywhere. So it's, this is why, and this is a, a misconception on when it comes to dancers and Caribbean people. The, when they say, I grew up knowing this and dancing, and they don't really say they grew up dancing, like social dancing. They, they just live, they were born and the mu music's playing all our life. All right, you know, so it's it's just part of our culture and it's part of our um, nostalgia yeah. growing up. So not necessarily they grew up dancing to this or 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 they have memories dancing to this music. Right. And they are dancers over there. There are they are dance studios in 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 Puerto Rico, obviously. And right now they're kind of blowing up. I think uh, 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 a guy named um, Great guy named uh, Eric Ortiz. He's been making splash out there in uh, in Puerto Rico, and he's you know it's, the the social dancing over there is is picking up as well. I think I've seen some events going on over there as well. So it is starting to to seep into the you know awareness and culture in in Puerto Rico. Um, of course, they did have their congress and all that for many years, but I'm noticing now thanks to social media. Um, recent in the recent years, it's been it's been growing. But back then, it was just the music was played everywhere, and you just grew up listening to it. You were tired of it already, you know. But it's and, pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty, pretty interesting you say that because it's very similar to the Dominican Republic and other islands. Um, when it comes to the culture, when it comes to growing up with the music, and even growing up with the dance, because when you guys have parties in your own house, you guys just dance. There is no such thing as whether you took dance lessons or not, it's just that you grew up with it, right? Absolutely, yeah. They call them the, the party de marquesina, party en la marquesina. You know, it's just in the balcony, a couple chairs, maybe a table yeah. that's covered or not, some food, music all night, and some lights, flashlights sometimes, you know, because you can't afford the fancy lights. But, hey, it was just a good time, time to bond with the family, with friends, and... That's what it's all about. I mean, you know, and it's pretty interesting. Also, they get you talk about dance studios. Now, 
in in that culture when you see dance studios like that what would you call them you call them professional dancers quote unquote hmm. yes they call they they pretty much perceive it as america got talent kind of ballroom dancers thing. maybe yeah ballroom dancer <laughs> yeah yeah they're like oh it's a solo bailarina you know those are the dancers yeah. that uh, perform yeah. that's what they went even if when you talk about even i still to my family and friends back in puerto rico yeah I tell them, yeah, I do dance socials and stuff, and they think it's just shows, you know. Yes, that's yes. <laughs> that's that's all it is. I just DJ the shows, yeah. and that's that's what it comes to their mind. And it's not their fault. I mean, you know, that's just the way it is. It, it, it's a culture. That's the way. It's just it's, like yeah. just like in the old days in the Dominican Republic when somebody say bachata, it's not necessarily the dance. Now that we describe, it's house party. It's amongst friends, you know. A way of life, and yeah. uh, and a and an underground too because you, as you know it was um not it it was considered uh street music ghetto music back in the day and and it was even oppressed by the government right. um the, the trujillo era yeah right, and, right. and and dominican republic yeah yeah so so it's it's something that it's it's very ingrained in the memories of the dominican republic as well and and in their soul because it was something that they rebel back in the day especially uh, and, even and, and, even even today, when when we are talking about the elites in the island, where they prefer merengue or bolero, uh, they still have because there's still that stigma with with bachata with the elites, especially the old school people. But I guess the social media changed all that. Romeo Santos, the Aventura, uh, Prince Royce really changed that. Absolutely. Culture. I mean, what do you think? Absolutely, yes. It it revolutionized the culture. I mean, I still remember when I was in high school. Like I said earlier, the, the music was blasting in every house window. It was Monchi Alessandra, you know, and, and, and Romeo when he was yeah. young, you know, yeah. it, 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 it was just everywhere. And it and it really, really, uh, it just it, it was it was a really big hit. I don't know how it was in the United States at that time, but I mean, it was well, really in big United in the States, island. The, yeah, the, in the United States, uh, unless you were from you're from the Bronx. Uh, it's a different story from the yeah. other side, you know. Absolutely. Uh, we're talking yeah, about yeah, 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 yeah. the only thing we would remember would be one uh, one Luis Guerra, <laughs> and at that time, you know, it was even bolero. Yeah, you know, it's a bolero tune, and, and so it's part of the Latin tradition. Uh, whether we you, you live in the West Coast uh, or, or somewhere in the North Coast, like it's California. And you uh, say Juan Luis Guerra, man, that gave me too many memories right now. <laughs> every, every Latinos know one who Luis, uh, Juan Luis Guerra was. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. He, he was an Emmy, uh, uh, Grammy winner, I should say. And, and a genius and, as well. That yeah, man, yeah. It's, it's, it, it goes beyond his music as well. So if anybody is interested in looking into more uh, Juan Luis Guerra, look into it. It's a very inspiring man. And that dude is on another level. So it's, it's, it's fantastic. Fantastic yeah. guy. So now uh, let's talk about you. Cause y you said you were a performer, you're a dancer. You, you were part of the team when you came to my festival, what made you decide to be a DJ? Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. So back in, uh, back in 2008, when I first moved to Florida, um, after being deployed in so, so many years in the Navy when I was in San Diego. So yeah. I was 10 years in San Diego, but I was barely, I was deployed all the time since I, I was in, on, a, on a carrier. Yeah. Um, when I finally got my shore duty, which is uh, I got to work on a base, not on a, not on the ship anymore. Yeah. Um, I got transferred to Jacksonville, Florida. And in Jackson, when I transferred to Jacksonville, I thought I was going to have enough time to go out and finally be in my home and, and the Navy it doesn't work that way sometimes, you know, so I was working six days a week, um, fixing airplanes every day, tired of them. <laughs> and then I only had one day off, only one day off. Now, I had to figure out what I need to do in that one day off, because I know it's going to be like this for a couple of years. So I need, I need one day and make it special, make it something, you know, uh, as that, as that was going on, I was listening to a lot of bachata, the Romeo, um, the extreme, especially extreme. I had a, yeah. all of a sudden I had a fever of listening to the uh, extreme CD in my car. Yeah. And, um, and I, at that time I was also in a, into car into the car meets and, and oh, I see. stuff like that. Um, I went into a car meet 
And one of my friends from the Navy uh, told me that he he was dancing, he was learning to dance in this school. And uh, I'm, I'm like, hmm, dancing. Oh, I never I thought of that. I, I've seen dancing in, in Romel's videos and and I always wondered where you can learn how to dance and stuff. Yeah. Of course, I didn't know anything about the scene at the time. I just went straight to that ballroom that he was recommending me to. And of course, you know, you pay that fee, that, that ballroom fee, right? <laughs> and that uh, $5,000, you know, to, to learn Foxtrot, to learn tango, to yeah. learn salsa. And I asked Bachata, I was like, can you teach Bachata? Now, all the other instructors were like, whoa, whoa, no, we don't, we don't do that. That's street, you know. But, but my instructor, the instructor I was there to meet, she knew the scene secretly. And she wanted to teach bachata, and I came in the right time. So she used every other dance as an excuse to teach me bachata, ultimately, in salsa. Uh, like a year passed, because uh, I was a hard head. I, it was, it was kind of hard to, to learn salsa for me at the beginning. Um, a year passed, and then she finally saw that I was ready, and uh, she wanted me to now get comfortable in the scene to dance with people, with, ask anybody. And she started taking me to out to clubs, and then she took me to a, a studio back then in Jacksonville called Caliente. Um, oh, bless him, I forgot his name, the, the owner, but uh, Caliente had a three day thing going on that 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 time. And I went. I have no idea. I'm like, okay, it's a three day dance thing. I'm I'm thinking like ballroom, like yeah. it's gonna be one of those showcase ballroom showcase. I go in and I see, and I didn't know at the moment, but I see Tigre practicing outside with, with he, he had like three, three or four kids behind him too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I, I have no, I had no idea who this man is, but he was dancing, doing some shine, some, some bachata shines and stuff. And I remember watching him like, wow, this dude is cool. It's, it's good. Wow. So I go, we go inside and he ends up teaching that, that, that class. And I learned, and that's when I started learning the, the Island Touch style of bachata, which I didn't know at the time, but right. it, that he, he's actually the first one after my instructor in the ballroom, first one in the scene to, that I went to a, a work, a, a work, um, a workshop. Yeah. Workshops done. Um, and then uh, I see him DJing after that. And I'm like, oh, he's the DJ. Now, during all this story that I just said, I was at home playing with turntables, you know, in, in my living room. So <laughs> I was just, you know, that was, that was all it was. I never thought it was going to be beyond that. I was just interested in the mechanics of it and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, but I see this man, he's DJ in Bachata, and he's, you know, doing his thing. I'm like, okay, he, he must be from around town. So let me see where he DJs around Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> And I approach, uh, I approach Tigre and I'm like, hey man, you know, uh, awesome music, man. This is awesome. I, I have no idea about these events. Um, where else you DJ around Jacksonville, around town? He's like, oh, you know, the Tigre style, you know, he's like, oh, I don't, I don't DJ around town. I DJ around the world. And I'm like, <laughs> that's Tigre. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, you that's do what? That's a trait, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you do what? <laughs> <laughs> DJ around the world and he gave me his card which I still have somewhere it's like yeah, yeah it's, it's those, uh, he gave me his card and I looked at him like DJs around the world he does he does bachata like, yep. salsa what what <laughs> I, I so so I got interested more and, and I started going out in the Jacksonville scene and I started meeting dancers and that's where I met um Beatty uh remember Beatty and uh uh Oh, what's her name? I forgot. No, Chris Beatty and 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 uh, they're they're married now. But Christopher, but Christopher Beatty is he's the first one that I met it. And Ali Knight as well. She was part of this. She's she's part of that studio as well. Yeah. And I met them, and I started going to their socials, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. So I thought I was slick, and I was gonna have my own crowd with the ballroom. So I threw a social in the ballroom, and it went well. But thanks to thanks to that social, uh, one of the dance house of Jack's dancers was there, and he told me, "Hey, man, you should come to us and DJ for us." Yeah. So, so that's that's how that's how it started. I mean, that's the little, little short version of it. <laughs> but uh, I I pretty much 
just saw what what Tigre was doing. Um, and I I always had that interest in DJing, and I was I was DJing in the living room. I, I did some birthday parties here and there, not a big deal. But when I saw what he was doing, I was like, that is awesome. I want to do that too, because I've been having this love for bachata and salsa, and, and I had no idea, you know, so I pretty much discovered this whole new world, you know, and then by being with Dan Salsa Jacks, uh, I, I joined their dance group, and then that's when you visited, they invited you, and then that's when I met you. Yeah. Man, it was such a long time ago. I think I, then, I, did, yeah. I did some workshops with, uh, hosted by uh, Christian Sola at that time. That, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm trying to remember. Big Nick there, and then uh, it was a three day event. Yeah, they yeah, did. It was a three day event, and I, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got closer. Uh, I forgot this uh, uh, brother that we had, uh, and then he 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 organized a. He actually created a group in Facebook. I forgot what uh, uh, he created a, a Facebook. North Florida salsa bachata. The that's uh, uh, Joseph, it, I think. It's it's. Uh, it's not it's not titled salsa it's just it's something that they pick like promote everything or something but okay okay it's, well, a, okay. it's a type of group and you know ever since he came to my festival tunes so that's how we connected and that's how i met you uh those are pretty good memories this are this were the days man those yeah were the it days was. where uh it's a different generation <laughs> I had a blast. I had a blast in Reno. Uh, that was a I mean awakening experience. Man. Yeah, but so how did you, as far as evolution in your music selection of music, uh, what what do you what do you do? What's the process like with you as a DJ? Well, the process the process is organ pretty much music choice and organization when it comes to socials because there's no mixing, right? There's no none of that fancy stuff. How do you organize like it? Do you organize the slow music? Uh, fast salsa, medium salsa. How do you organize it? I like I like to organize it by speed and by time of the event, you know. So, and I, I like, but it has to sound good still, even though different different BPMs. But it has to still have an impact. Or, uh, you know, a, a there's there's a thing there's a thing I notice when I do socials and parties. Um, certain songs when they start, if they know them. And and I know many DJs, other DJs call them, you know, known songs or or or, or mainstream songs, but those have a use as well in the social for sure. successful social. Sure. You know, and uh, I I just organize them by like to hype it. So so you hype it up with a song. You you okay. get them to stand up. Right. You know, and 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 you don't want to tire them as well at the beginning too. So you want to do a good it could be like 80 BPM or, or 80, 88, 90 BPM, yeah. you know, and, and then and bachata is a different BPM and stuff. Right, 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 right. So I, I just, I just, it's either speed mood, you know, the, the mood, what, what the music makes you feel, at least I, I, when I listen to it, how it makes me feel. And I try to see if, and so far it's been working <laughs> yeah. been all these years but you know if yeah. it makes me feel a certain way if i play it at, at a certain time you know i'm pretty sure it's gonna the vibe is gonna spread to the rest yeah do the you agree with well, the notion so. that the clubs are the studio social versus the congress crowd it's different so you guys in a different strategy or different mode as a dj absolutely it's a totally different strategy it's a totally different uh, mindset you got to get into. Um, I do different types of events, like even the the regular Latin nights. You yeah. you can't get in it. You can't go in that in a Latin night in a club. You can't really go in in a social Latin night settings. It's possible. Yeah. But um, the crowd might not agree. You know. So it's you have very to interesting you say that because one time uh, I've been in London. I went to London. Uh, and then I went to a club called uh, Bar Salsa, and uh, uh, Julian Julian uh, Julian actually is a Colombiano. He's a well-known teacher and a DJ there, and so he's been playing some modern stuff, you know. Uh, and he knows I'm there, so I wasn't, you know, I didn't I didn't care whether he played modern or he played uh, traditional. 
I just danced. And then all of a sudden, he was playing traditional straight, man. Like traditional, traditional, fast, fast, medium, traditional. I was like, Julian, what the hell happened? How come you're playing all of that stuff? Do you see those locos over there? Yeah, that's why I'm playing, because there are some locos over there. <laughs> it's like, what do you do? What do you guys do usually with DJs? Let's say bachata. And you see Dominicanos there, man. You see Dominicanos that are locos right there. I was like, what do you guys do? Do you actually pay a little respect and, and, and do you play the hardcore stuff? I do play you do play the hardcore stuff. I had that many I had that many times in Orlando, especially here recently yeah. in yeah. and 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 but they usually ask for merengue, not bachata, huh? Um, they so when they ask for bachata, and yeah. this is what I do because I don't I don't go straight all you know traditional and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you you got to be creative. DJs are creative. You got to right. mix the sound. So anyway, so like recently, I had this guy from they're from Miami, and yeah. uh, they they came in, and I was play I was I was in a hip hop set at, at the at, at that moment. Everybody's vibing, everybody's good, but then all of a sudden he came. He's like, "Mira, papo." Can you play a can you can you play a bachata pero pero disgusting to sabe the nasty the guitarrita you know the <laughs> guitar and I was like papi yeah you got it man and I played you know I played a traditional yeah. you know because yeah. they love the guitar that's all they want that's, that's the all they want I agree and the and the traditional is more yeah. guitar more accentuated guitar than you know it has a guitar yeah the modern yeah but it's more yeah. subtle and yeah 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 these guys like the guitar. Anyway, um, so I just I just put in I I put in a traditional for them, and they started dancing, you know, and not nothing fancy, but they were dancing. That's important. They were dancing. That's yeah. what you want. That's what the venue wants. They see yeah. people having fun. Yeah. It don't matter. Yeah. So they're dancing. The bachata. I played. I let it play entirely because they everybody's vibing in there. Everybody's drinking. Yeah. And, and everybody's happy. So you know you don't have to mix all the time so yeah, it's, no, no, it's no, a combination no. of skills it's a common sense you know and 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 just reading the crowd yeah. which is the number one thing um so they start they, they dance and then luckily i was getting ready for a modern a modern one but with you know with with uh, there's modern that has that heavy bass and stuff that you want to keep the vibe going you know so you can use modern there's there's ways to mix modern and traditional and keep the, yeah. the yeah. keep the room going you know yeah yeah that's not impossible thing it's not a it's not even a a, a big deal either so yeah, but yeah. uh so i was i was getting ready for that next song and um and the same this the same guy but his wife came he's like oh i'm about to get married and can can you play the bruno mars of mary or, or i don't know i forgot it was like a marry me song I, I have the bachata, you know, by DJ, uh, by DJ C yeah. of that version. And, uh, and it hits hard as well. Yeah. So I mixed it in with the traditional because, you know, you just, just match the BPM and all that and mix it in, make sure it sounds good and uh, make sure guitars are, 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 <laughs> are matching. No, yeah. don't just, don't just throw it in there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I played it and they danced to the modern. They were, and, and they were impressed because of course, other than us in the dance scene, these people never hear the Soul Trick remixes, the Tuye Tronki remixes. Uh, they don't hear that. They don't hear that out there. They they just unless you're a DJ from the scene and you're you're doing clubs as well. Yeah. You know they're they're not gonna know about that music. They're gonna be like, wow, like mind blown. But yeah. But only for the ones that are like bangers. You know, like heavy hit, heavy hitting. What I mean by that, that has a heavy beat that keeps, you know. Cause it's kind of like it's a problem with reggaeton nowadays. Uh, all the new reggaeton is kind of like the smooth, auto tune, which are good. They're good, but not all the time. <laughs> it doesn't work. It, you know, people are not gonna vibe to that same style of a reggaeton. So you gotta throw in the '90s reggaeton, like DJ. You know, the 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 Dinois and the playeros and and all that stuff and gotta, the heavy head and stuff. You gotta put some classic reggaeton. And it, and it's and it's the same as with the bachata. You know, you yeah, gotta, yeah. you know, and that's why. And, and I don't bash it, and I don't hate the opinion, anything like that. Whatever, everybody to their own, and 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 success. You know, but uh, you know the when people worry about like um, 
and, and this doesn't apply to the Congresses that are specialized, like like the Mega and, and all the other Congresses that happen yeah. that have separate rooms for for the for the styles. Sure. That's fine because you know the purpose of the Congress is a Congress for dancing, yeah. and you wanna. But uh, but when people are like in smaller events, worried about oh why we can't have a separate room for uh, bachata from um, between nineteen. 91 and 1996 and then we have this other room for, for the traditional bachata and then we have this other room for 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 modern bachata and then this one for uh, super slow bachata you know all these rooms and stuff just just don't worry about people are gonna they're gonna say every, all they want to say online yeah yeah you go out there mix what you like and what you feel yeah that sounds great they're gonna dance to it and they're gonna have a blast and you're gonna right. see it. Right, you know? right. Yeah. So it's I don't know, it's just don't don't worry about what the face Facebook is silly. <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> Everybody has their own opinion <laughs> on social media, as you know. Yeah. Just just play, you know, to those I'm I'm talking to those DJs out there, you know, just or, or the newer ones, you know. Uh the older ones, they're not gonna listen to me. <laughs> so like, just, I mean, you know, the, it, it at least for me, because I DJ from time to time. It's what I like. I play what I like. Uh, there is that part. There is that twenty percent that I gauge the audience, uh, what they like, what they prefer, how many people are dancing when I play this type of music, how many people uh, are not dancing when I play this type of music. You know, uh, there is that certain percentage as a DJ that you have to read the audience, but there are else the the main percentage. Your very foundation as a DJ for me is the music that I play. The reason I became a DJ is because I want to share the music that I play. I want to share the music that I like, you know, uh, that's the main thing. And then the other uh, reasons that I became a DJ is just the icing of the cake. You know, uh, uh, there are some, I don't consider myself a prof professional DJ because I am a teacher first, a dance teacher first. Whatever I play during workshops is where people ask, hey, what kind of music is that? What's the title of that song? You know. Uh, I just like and most of most of the students and some DJs right there, they have a Shazam <laughs> app. So whenever they're 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 watching a workshop, when a, a somebody teach, they Shazam that thing. It's like, hey, I like the music I played, and it's not a surprise that at that night they played that certain music that the teacher played earlier. Uh, now, there is also a DJ which I don't like. I particularly don't like this type of DJ, DJs where they compete with other DJs of, hey, I want you to listen to this. I bet you never listen to this because you haven't seen this music. So I'm going to play it. It's a competition of who has discovered certain songs that are not commercial. Somehow I hate that because sometimes that come out as the only music you like but the crowd really don't like it does that make sense no no it totally makes sense i totally understand what you're talking about and i'm not i'm not in that i love collecting um the the rarest stuff i love finding stuff that people don't not hear but the stuff that people know as well and grew up with remember guys a lot of caribbean people grew up to this music mm -hmm. that you you mm -hmm. want to call trash mainstream yeah 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 silly. you know i've i've sadly i i throughout the years and recently you know um I, i've been hearing that i've been hearing it from even even like congress promoters some some of the comics promoters and stuff like that and, and there's many of them out there you know but <laughs> um some of them just say that oh that type of a chat is trash and it's like what do you mean it's trash and they can't answer it's like why you call that trash? It's, it's all come from the same place. I mean, at least the origin. Everything is inspired by it, you know? Like, it's not trash because they play it at the club. It's not trash because it's played on the radio at the time, you know? It's people's memories. It's people what, what they grew up with. And it's, it's a yeah. love of music. And it's what established what bachata is now and what salsa is. It's been, because salsa's been for a very long time mm -hmm. since, you know, so um I, i'm just one I, i'm just more advocate of if you have one room and you have all different types of people in there you it's possible to keep it 
popping. I do it all the time. I've done it all the time. You know, that you can play the classics, you can play the knowns. You can balance it. You can balance it. It's a balance. It's a balance. Music choice and balance. That's yeah. that's all it is. And uh, trust your gut when you do I mean, it. If I have ways, if I have ways as a, as a promoter, I'd rather have one room. But unfortunately, uh, in this age uh, of modern dancing, there are certain people that only likes particular stuff. And... You know, I don't fault them for that. Everybody has a choice. Everybody has preference. And so as a promoter, to make everyone happy, you have to have, sometimes you have to have two rooms. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. And, 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 and like I said, like I said earlier, like in Congresses, that's different. That those yeah. are, our, those are special events. Those are catered to yeah. that. But you can't have a Congress every weekend, every Friday at a club or, you know, studio maybe, but at, at a, because I, there's a lot of DJs that go through so much to get these spots. These, these I mean, venues. I mean, even a congressman, I'd like to have one room where you could play salsa, cha cha cha, bachata, merengue. Uh, although some congresses are really snobs when it comes to merengue, by the way, uh, uh, and 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 some certain certain uh, uh, you know certain bolero. Yeah, yeah. So if you combine all of that, for me, why I like that is because I like varieties, and also I like to be able to dance everything. I. Personally, if I'm in the traditional room, I cannot personally stand traditional all night and dance traditional all night. Vice versa with sensual, uh, uh, modern type of music uh, uh, or, or, or dance styles. I cannot dance that forever. So if there's two rooms. I'm going to be going back and forth there. Uh, uh, of course, I have my preference. Uh, in, you know, if I can have a, a, a traditional you know, uh, uh, 60% and 40% central, I'd prefer it. But my number one preference is a room with one where everyone can dance everything, you know? Absolutely. And, and there's no, you know, and again, like, you know, just, just a disclaimer for everybody, you know, I don't have no problem with the separate rooms. I just have a pro, you know, I was just mentioning because of what people post when they get a little snobby about, you know, it, it has to be that way or, yeah. Or, or that might, you know, and, and whatever. But honestly, you know, if you're, even, even as a DJ, if you're hired to do a central room, the same thing applies. Understand. You get, you, you get, you get all those central songs. Yep. Yep. You listen to it. There's good ones. There's bad ones. Eliminate the bad ones. <laughs> you know, you, yeah. it's still, you know, it, it, it's still the same technique. You just have to put some effort in it and, 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 and make sure no matter what you do, if it's a cumbia night, you want that, <laughs> you want that, you want the best cumbia. Look yeah. for the best cumbia, make sure they have a, a, a great time, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, me, I, I come from the perspective of, you know, the DJ has to be prepared for whatever. If, yeah. if you want to make money out there or you want to put yourself out there, right. um, you know, as a professional, you, you, you want to be ready for anything. You know, I hate weddings. I do still do them. I hate and weddings. Still, and, I, and, I, and I I still organize them. I yeah. still have to organize. I still rock it, but it doesn't mean I I would love to do them every often, you know. <laughs> and and like uh and, and last night uh last night I was at Mas Por Favor Las Vegas and uh last night it, it's always a different crowd that I get. Yeah. So you have to be ready all the time. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not like in the socials. No, they're the coming from dancing. all over. Yeah. No. Yeah. You, so yesterday it was. Pretty much a mariachi night. Ah, I see. what do I know about mariachi? Nothing. But I, <laughs> I made it work. I yeah. made it work, and it, <laughs> and and the 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 owner of the venue came up. He's like, I love how everybody was having fun. That's what matters. You know, they, they were all drinking. Absolutely. Um, they were all, you know, you know, hey, you're getting hired by somebody. You want to make sure that job is done <laughs> some Absolutely. one way or another. Yeah. So now what do you, you know, use uh, what, as a DJ? What's your opinion and uh, the equipment you use? Is there's, is this, do you use a, an equipment where the usual DJs use or you, you go, you go into other stuff like pioneer or some other, some other brand. I have, I, I mainly use pioneer. Yeah. Um, and, and Apple and pretty much the, popular the more expensive popular products that that are out there but pretty much anything um any all these controllers are good are good they work the same way um especially for socials you don't really require much 
Um, you just have to, so, social DJing is all about your music choice and, and, and knowing what to play. Um, so you don't need all these EQ buttons and, you know, a small, which, which I have, I have different types. Uh, it's a small, a small portable. I mean, for the last uh, 10 years, I had a, it was called Novation Twitch. I think it was, it was a small little, it was a laptop size controller. You, uh, you saw it actually, I actually brought it to, it's even in the flyer that you made me from the first time I ever got to Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You brought, so that little tiny controller, that's, that's all I used for socials, you know, because obviously you're not mixing stuff and, and you can still mix on it when, if, if, you know, at the end of the night, you know, the vibe is right for reggaeton or, or party music or dance yeah. or whatever, you know, there you go. You, wow. you have everything you need to mix, but yeah, I'll give you that. To me, it, to me, it doesn't matter. Some, there we go. I'm sort of got thrown in some hip hop music uh, or even Kizomba, uh, 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 Zook type of music. Yeah. Mixing is important, but in our industry, the majority whether it's especially supposedly salsa Congress or bachata, you don't need to be mixing that stuff. Therefore you don't need fancy equipment. Uh, no, you uh, don't. It has to be portable. It has to yeah, be, a lot especially of for Congress. Yeah. You know, a lot of people debate this. Really? Like, oh, no, it sounds so good if you have this. I was like, I don't know. I don't see. I don't hear the difference. You have a so the Congresses usually have a mixer in a well, some of them usually have a have a mix, <laughs> have a mixer with a sound engineer. I mean, yeah. I know in Orlando Congress, they do have one uh, yeah. every time I do Orlando when I used to do the Orlando Congress. Uh, Ventura Dance Cruise, they definitely had one. Yeah. Um, some con I, I can't. There's so many. Uh, some of the congresses that I've seen have 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 the engineer, and if they don't, there's a mixer. You connect it there, and there you can adjust your music. You know, you can pre. I mean, you're not sometimes. You know, I I could be wrong. Sometimes you don't have time to, because you're you're switching sets with another DJ, so you gotta. So I kind of kind of understand what you. I, I've never seen the arguments and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I don't get into those arguments. Oh, this either. is not a public um, argument. It's within yeah, yeah. within it's within the DJs at the congresses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some some equipment. I don't know, man, because I mean, I, I just use so many different types that I don't see. I haven't had issues, other than them being overused and beat up over time. That's the only problem I've seen yeah. with with. But, uh, and then software could be an issue too. Um, I use Serato because that's been the most reliable thing, and especially if I use different controllers. Because then on a weekly basis, I'm using, I'm either on a CDJ three thousand or a CDJ two or C CDJ two thousand, or I'm using a DDJ ZZ whatever, or I'm using my one thousand SRT or my SB three or S four hundred. You know, it just, you know, it requires a lot of, uh, you got to install drives and, and and DJs know what I'm talking about. And and you have to be, your Serato has to be able to, you know, as, as long as you maintain it, your software has to be able to connect and go, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's why I chose, I'm using Serato. I mean, I know there's Rekordbox. Rekordbox has been pretty good, which I've been trying out a little bit because Rekordbox, it's, it's, it's under Pioneer. Um, and, and, and other programs, I don't, I don't even, I don't know if people still use Tractor. I know people will still use uh, Virtual DJ, obviously. I, I use Virtual, virtual DJ, DJ is not that I use, bad. I use Virtual DJ or I use yeah, Pro yeah. DJ. Yeah. I even, I still have Virtual DJ in my laptop. If I have to, if for some reason something goes wrong, I can switch to the Virtual DJ. It's going to read your iTunes anyways. You, can just... you know what I like? There was an app where you could, uh, you could connect it to Spotify they removed that app, man. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm mad at that too. The reason I too. like it because Spotify, Spotify is my type of app where people can request any shit that I don't know about. I could just search it and right there, you know. But and we all we all do it. Yeah, we all do it. We all use Spotify. We connect, you know, we connect it to one of the channels we're not using and, and yeah. put Spotify for those weird requests that we weird get request. you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah they are oh man, they are I weird think, <laughs> I, i've been getting some you know there's some requests that i get that i'm like if i don't see uh twenty dollars or forty dollars there a tip I'm, I'm not gonna stop the vibe of the night to to play that oh, you know, here's so. another thing for, for, for the for the uh, viewers here when you request something guys 
you know, we'll, we'll tell you, okay, we're not going to play it right away, okay, because you're going to ruin our flow. When we are at that flow, you better be damn be there with that. When we're playing the song, you better be there dancing it. Otherwise, you can never request any music from us again. <laughs> I had that. I had that happen to me yesterday. They wanted, uh, obviously, what a surprise. They wanted yeah. Bad Bunny. <laughs> See, the Tierra de Novia, the, the new <laughs> one. You know, and I'm like, okay, I mix it in. They're sitting there just, just, just you know, drinking the drink. Other people were dancing. <laughs> Other people were dancing, but the one that requested it. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, no Dude, more, no yeah. more of you. No more of you Come because on, right? <laughs> I understand. So you, you got to see uh, the viewer's perspective that are not DJs. I know you guys want your mute, your song so it can make, you know, so it can make your night. But you have to understand that we're not have the to, only one there. <laughs> we are looking at 10 of you. We are looking at 20 of you yeah. with di with different tastes. And 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 what we're looking at is the percentage. You see people, you see five people dancing and three on the in the nah. in the couch. You, yeah. you just keep, keep flowing to the five people. Eventually those three are gonna join, you know. And then and then when those five people get tired, you know, that's when you want to throw in the request. So sometimes you want to wait. Yeah. Because it's just not the right time. That's it's not right. that we don't want to play it either, because sometimes they do some good requests, and I'm like, good timing, yeah, awesome, because I've been wanting to play that song. Yeah. So you know, sometimes it's been like that too. So don't another, get mad at don't get mad at the DJ. Thing. Yeah, don't get another mad at the DJ. Another annoying thing is, uh, you know, they request something, and because I think maybe you're in that mood that you're not taking requests, you're just you're just in that mood. That's just the way it is that you're not taking requests. You would say, I don't have it. Now, the next step is the most annoying part. They get their phone, they get the song. Always. Here, can you play it? <laughs> nope. <laughs> but that's the most insulting thing you could ever do a DJ. <laughs> you know? I ignore it. Yeah. They they get that vibe quick. I mean, I haven't had I haven't had somebody give me the phones. I haven't had that. Too many. I, I've only had a few, you know, requests. Most of the times, I don't really get uh, people to request because they're just busy dancing, really. But you know, oh, and then I, I've had I have one instance. Uh, some uh, I played. Uh, so so I wanted to get the crowd to move more. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I was trying. I wanted to get the crowd. There's a crowd dancing, but I want to get more, to, especially the ones that are that are sitting down. Yeah. I want them to to. To get into the action as well, so I play suavemente. Oh, whoa, what a <laughs> oh, oh, wow! Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, I play suavemente, right? And everybody stands up and starts dancing. It's like it looks like a freaking EDM, EDM, you know, like a concert. While that's happening, one guy comes up and says, "Hey, man, you you're gonna get shot playing that out here." <laughs> Do you see the crowd? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to shoot between all that, all that people. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. No, no that's and then, and then, and then the, the person looked, the person looked, and it was like, "Oh shit, you're right." Uh, okay, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got a story for you in Hawaii. I just had a festival there, uh, and there was one room of bachata, one room of salsa, and um, I forgot the DJ who was playing. He was playing traditional stuff, but really, really good traditional. Uh, it's like in between of the classic and in between of the modern, you know, type you see, of he, he organized, he organized yeah, yeah, and yeah. he went through his, yep. So when he did that, he do it. people are dancing, man. It was packed. And then I got one or two complaints like Rodney. Nobody's dancing because they're playing a lot of Dominican stuff, quote unquote, Dominican stuff. What the hell does that mean? Anyway, but I know what they meant, you know, like, like, you know Dominican stuff is like, and then we both look at the ballroom. I was like, a lot of people dancing. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but they're still not playing things. I was like, all right, you know, next year I'm going to make, I'm going to have two rooms so that there's no freaking complaint. But you could tell the music is good. Why? Because people are dancing. <laughs> you know, those, those, those people, look, so I understand you like one genre and that's great. You know, and if you're just dedicated to that one genre, that's, that's fantastic. That's good. But don't don't expect the world to cater to you all the time. You know, try to enjoy the events as what they are. 
Yeah. There's a, you know, like a fantastic group named uh, Central Movement. They're, they've been, you know, creating a splash all over the United States. You like Central, Central Bachata? They got you. They, you know, they play it there, go there, go to their events. Don't, but don't, don't go to other people's events and disrespect them by saying, you know, you're not playing. Because I, I hear this all the time, too, in different types of events, especially with dancers, because this is why I'm loving the clubs right now and I'm loving the, the mainstream and I'm loving the, you know, where, where, where the money's at. Um, it's just people, people don't really complain that much. It's just, you know, sometimes they request and it's, it's bothersome, but they don't complain. They just vibe with what's going on, you yeah. know, especially tourists and people that, you know, they're not dancers really. They just vibe with the night. And that's, I always, I always that's the best around. way. When yeah, somebody that's... requests something, it's like, look, when you go to a Chinese restaurant, don't <laughs> order Pad Thai, dude. That's for Thai restaurant. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so if you go to Central Movement events, please don't request any <laughs> any traditional stuff. You know what you're getting into. <laughs> oh, don't don't be going to my boy Willie, you know, and say, oh, nobody's nobody's dancing. You're not playing traditional. And everybody's dancing behind him, you know. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that, guys. You know, just, res you know, these people... The all of these event organizers work very hard. You know what I'm saying? Even if, if you don't like them or not, it doesn't matter. They work very hard to get these, these venues for you guys to enjoy what you guys learned for, to dance and stuff, which is, that's the number one reason to enjoy. Ah. Back, back to what we were talking about in Puerto Rico, when we were, or Puerto Rico and the Caribbean, we're, we're raised with the music and stuff. Yeah. Number one reason is to enjoy. Yep. You know, and that's what Latin music stands for, to enjoy it and to be happy, to enjoy life. That's why you see us uh, Latinos and everybody else, whatever, you see us partying all the time. We're looking for an excuse to party. Yes. Because it's all about enjoyment. So when right. you go to an event, you go to the Mega Bachata, to the Super Congress, to the Orlando Congress, Aventura, uh, uh, the San Francisco, you know, who, who, who's ever event. Don't go there demanding your style or or your. Just go enjoy it. You paid them. You paid the money to enjoy what that event is about. Don't don't go online complaining that that's not bachata or that's mm -hmm. not. You know what kind of event is this? Oh, uh, why why the or, or, or you know when you sometimes events post like videos of like they will be like a reggaeton video and they're having yeah. fun. It's called a bachata yeah. festival. Yeah, but don't don't go bashing it because it has reggaeton music. You know, it's just yeah. they're just they're just promoting the fact that it's a fun event to go to. You know, you know, I I never understood the the conflicts and stuff like that. It's it's just, it's just it just baffles me and <laughs> and it, it, just enjoy yourselves, guys. You know, let the trust in the DJs. You know, the DJ we us DJs we love what we do. You know, a lot of us do this especially in the in the in the social dancing scene a lot of them do it for free a lot of them doing for no money at all a lot of them do it for the passion or the passion yeah imagine you doing something for the passion you're sacrificing your time your hours you could be at home chilling if you want your equipment because this these this equipment we were talking about rob how, how much how much you think these equipment you know dj equipment is nowadays especially thousands, with of, thousands of dollars spend a lot of money yeah you know, and, and, and don't, don't go up there and be like, you know, give them a hard time yeah. because they're just playing, you know, they're, they're, they're just trying the to cater to everybody. Just a freaking headphone alone, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Everything yeah. is expensive, especially nowadays with the inflation and all that. So yeah, it's uh, just impre inflation and we're about to go in recession also, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah. But so anyways, uh, now your transition from Jacksonville to Las Vegas as a DJ is it hard? How 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 did it how did it go well for you? Because I've I've watched you from Jacksonville to Vegas. Uh, I didn't know this then, but you told me you were moving to Vegas. When you moved to Vegas, I think it's just a short period of time you were getting gigs here and there. Yeah. Um, so there was I was in Jacksonville for until 2013. Um, then I did. Then I got a job in Orlando, and at the same time. Um, this Christian Sola actually discovered, uh, saw saw me DJ and 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 that's also Jack Social, and then he yeah. got it, and then he 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 actually connected me with an event called uh, 
bachata invasion, which was the very first, at least in Florida, very first 100% bachata night in a club. Nice. This, is in, this is in that location in uh, International Drive in Orlando. Is it still there? Um, uh, Cuba Libre, yeah. Cuba Libre is still there. Um, the event, I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, that, because I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, he, he... He got a he he got the venue with Cuba Libre, which was one of the hottest locations to get in Orlando. Um, he got the second floor because so the, the main floor they did all the regular Latin night music and stuff, and then on the second floor you would go up and dance bachata all night. Yeah. Uh, so we would do that every Friday. I think we started like once a month at first, so the, so the venue can get comfortable with the idea. You know how that goes, and then we went and then we went every Friday. Um, that's where I got my bachata uh my my bachata skills musically um to build up yeah because uh you know i was i went from and and, th and this is what you know all this that i'm saying right now is, is what prepared me to this madness called las vegas right so i was i was djing in jacksonville doing the socials press and play to salsa press and play to bachata you know, I wasn't mixing because there was no necessary, there was no need, and I didn't have no gigs that required it at the time. Yeah. So I was just doing socials and socials. Um, all of a sudden, Christian Sola and the and and the manager from Cuba Libre Orlando calls me on a conference call and says, "Hey, uh, we're gonna start doing a bachata night. Uh, are you able to drive from Jacksonville to Orlando um, every um, once in a while Friday? Because it was it was once a month at first. And I said, "Yeah." And I went there. That was my first uh, experience on a, in a club club. So I went in there to pretty much jump, threw myself into the sharks. I went yeah. in there and, and I, I had to knew, know how to hook up. I know how to, you know, because they weren't playing around. And, I, and, then, that, and then we started doing the bachata nights. Successful. Um, five years. It lasted. And then, um, and then I... During that time, I was do I was I was I was doing Cuba Libre. In that period, I started getting more gigs, and you know, with Salsa Heat, I started doing their big socials and their bachata madnesses. Uh, I started because uh, it was Te Tess. I was doing the bachata madnesses, but whenever she was not able to do it, you know, I would jump in to do those. Yeah. And um, and then I was, uh, and then little by little, I got to do the big social, the big orla, which is the big, you know. Uh, Orlando social with salsa heat right. and I started doing those as well and then I started doing other uh, senior frogs Orlando um since I got I was already getting good experience with Cuba Libre all these years and I started yeah. jumping into other clubs as well and and I was still trying to do like social nights on those clubs how did I do it I don't know but it, it, it kind of worked <laughs> and then but I was doing all those events and then um and then uh let me see what happened oh so throughout throughout those five years i started uh discovering the sources to find the rare bachatas which was at the time soul tricks has his website and and other other sources as well i started finding those and i started playing them at the bachata invasion yeah you know, every every friday in orlando and christian sola was like I remember when I first time I played one of those remixes, which I know that Tigre was already doing it and, and, and some other DJs at the time, you know, in other places. Um, but I, I, I happened to, I was able to discover for myself where the sources are through research. Uh, I started playing, and this was early through, early in the, in the five years of Cuba Libre. Um, I started playing the remixes and Christian Sola was like, oh my God, you know, where did you get that? And I'm like, oh yeah, I got it somewhere, <laughs> you know. Then yeah. I tell him, I tell, I tell him at first. Yeah. And then he bugged me, he bugged me, he bugged me, he bugged me, and I'm like, finally, I'm like, all right, man, this is the website where you can get them, and this is these are the producers, you know that that you know you that makes them, which included uh, Sotrix and all that. Right. And uh, and and immediately he 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 found out where where uh where some of those producers were and and all that and then uh so then at the end of those five years he wanted to do something different and uh 
So he replaced me with one of those producers that made bachata. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't pretty because the way it was executed at the time, it was a miscommunication and we had a yeah. fallout after that. But um he 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 had the he had the producer come in and and he did the they continued their uh, uh bachata invasion. So but then it, I don't know what happened months later it 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 got canceled or something like canceled that. Canceled something, yeah. And then the and then the 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 senior frogs and the other clubs, I pretty much gave them away to an, an, another guy. Yeah. Because I wanted to focus more on the salsa because the salsa heats and the congresses were picking up. I, I was going to a lot of congresses every week, you know, every, every, yeah, there was a time that it got to a whole, pe- a whole year period. I was just going nothing but congresses. Yeah. So I was kind of like, I wanted to focus on that. So I gave the clubs and some venues to, to other, other DJs that, that want, needed, needed opportunity. And I just continued on with Salsa Heat and congresses pretty uh-huh. much. And that's when I went to, uh, you know, I started doing the Aventura dance crews, the DC congresses, the the Atlanta congresses. There was one in Charlotte one time. I did the New Year's Eve in uh, Chicago, which was a fantastic time. At the time, they were called a uh, party rock. I think it was for the 2014-15 New N- NY. That was a great time. I, I, I love those guys. And, I, you know. If any of you from Party Rock back in the day in Chicago are, are watching, you know, thank you so much. That's great memories. They even celebrated my birthday that time. So it, it was uh, great memories in Chicago. Um, yeah, you name it, all the Congress, including including your Congresses, you know, the San Francisco and the, in the Las Vegas, which was yeah. the first time I ever came here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I started focusing on that. So I started um, living the, the travel DJ. And as a travel DJ, because you go into every all these congresses, you have to get be ready for anything because you know how it is. You got to know, yeah. you know, and and then the promote and then from self promoting myself as well. I just I don't know. Um, there's no there's no real reason other than me liking to post. So I make the flyer and and I like to post and make everybody aware where I'm gonna yeah. be. I just like doing that and. Um, and yeah, and that was that was a whole two year period, and uh, things got crazy. I mean, congresses every every weekend, you know, things things start to blur. You know, you start acting a certain way, you know, and 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 then misunderstandings happen as well because it's just such a hectic way of life. Yeah, you know, at the end of it, I said no more. <laughs> this was like 2016, I think yeah and it was during the period I, when i met my wife as well yeah um my current my, my wife right now and um at that time i was you get burned i got burned yeah. um doing all these congresses and traveling and and then i wasn't you know i wasn't organized financially and stuff like that so it was it was kind of a like a a little struggle as well right, and, right, right. you know and that was that was another thing going on so I decided to stop and I was like, I can't continue life like this. I got to organize myself, settle. And then when I'm do that, I'll come back to do what I love, but yeah. for the love of it, not for necessity, because right. it was becoming a necessity as well. Um, so I quit for two years. That's when I disappeared. Maybe most of you wondered where the hell Suave Beats went after a certain time. And that's when I found my, uh, I found the aviation job and I settled, I got my financials, financials all organized. I got everything squared away. And then I got transferred because of my aviation company, I got transferred to Las Vegas. And so, yeah, I got transferred to Las Vegas. Then I got transferred over here to Las Vegas a month before the pandemic hit. Yeah. So I got here. I went to a social. There's none. <laughs> I went, yeah, no, no, I went, I went to uh what's his name? The a Moderno studio. Uh-huh. With, with, uh, with Ace. Right. He was he had a social. That was my first social here in Vegas. And I went to his social and had a blast, you know. And I and I remember seeing Nate in there. It's just I didn't recognize him at the time. <laughs> he had a he had a vegan shirt. Travel, 
It's probably that there. <laughs> yeah, he was in. He was in there. It was a tall dude in there, but I never knew who he was. You know, yeah. I was like, "Wow, that dude is tall." Okay, yeah. you know, I, I'm new in town. You know, I don't know. Yeah. And and I go in there. I, I I dance. I have a blast. You know, I see Ace. He's DJing. Uh, great DJ as well. He he he's great dancer and DJ. And um, I had a blast. I, I got to meet some Las Vegas you know locals, and I was like, "Oh, this this is cool." But at the time, I wasn't thinking of returning to DJ. I wasn't you not yet right you know i was just going to i just wanted needed to dance and stuff yeah then the pandemic hit nothing was going las vegas was a desert like yeah. i'm telling you i don't even know people were still coming but not 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 a lot it was empty no. yeah you couldn't have a, a beer you can't walk around with a beer because you had to have the mask yeah and it was a very complicated very sad i mean las vegas without the entertainment is nothing <laughs> I got to see that. I was like, there is nothing going on here. Yeah. This place is useless without any party because none of that was going on during the yeah. pandemic. Um, but then while, while the pandemic was going on, I started getting that urge again because, you know, I'm, I'm organized, I'm settled, you know, money's great money, you know, life is great. There's nothing stopping me right now. I, yeah. And, and I have that itch to go back to what I love to do, which is DJing. And um, that's when I started, I think I, I think I contacted you to see yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, to to who's who's to talk to in Vegas, you know? Yeah, who's, yeah. Who I talked to in Vegas. I, I have no idea, you know? I only only knew about Moderno Studio. Yeah, I told you about um, Nate, yeah. And then you told me, you told me about Nate and I, I saw his picture, I recognized him <laughs> because I went to the social. <laughs> The tall guy. Yeah, tall guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I got into a conversation with him and I, I told him kind of like my background and stuff. And he's like, oh, yeah, he's he's he, you know, he, he knows about all those events and stuff. And and he said, yeah, well, once 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 the pandemic is not, you know, happening, you know, he was he was he was really trying to get stuff going during uh, during the pandemic. because It was so hard. Yeah, it's possible. Then, and then sadly, yeah. And then sadly in Las Vegas, which I don't know. Who, who did it or who was doing it or or, or if it was like uh, people that were afraid of of the disease obviously um or just doing it they were calling the police every time you threw a party and that was every party around here anything so if you had a gathering police would come and they're like somebody called us complaining so 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 Nate didn't want to run that risk and i yeah, think i think he mess with that yeah yeah and then and then i think some incidents happened too that so he wanted to prevent that you know but he was trying he was trying his best to go to you know to to get things started out here in, in vegas dancing wise um and he was trying and i was keeping an eye on all that stuff you know i was like okay well you know let's 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 see where let's see where what we can get away with you know yeah but then finally uh Things got things started to get looser, and they were allowing. Vegas took a while, because I remember that we were still on lockdown, and then Nevada, Nevada take, took a while. Yeah, yeah, it was still on lockdown, and then all my friends that I hooked up in Orlando with events, because remember I, before I quit, I called I called several DJs in Orlando to take over the events. You know, I'm right. like, hey man, I don't I don't want to DJ no more. You, you can go ahead and do, just go ahead and talk to Mike for Salsa Heat and and dj you know so it's a lot of a lot of those djs down there took over the events i had because i i had i had a lot of events down there in orlando that i was doing and i just i didn't want to just leave them dry yeah so you know i i let i let the local um the some of the djs which they're still djing right now um some of the local djs in orlando to take over and continue on and they and, and it was great to see now the thing is nevada was in lockdown and uh Orlando, Florida, not. No. So all no. these parties was going on, you know. See these DJs having a blast in in, in Florida, and I'm over here in, in, in Las Vegas, locked down. And I was like, man, you know. And that's what helped me want to get into it even more. Like it, it, it was like give me that burning passion of you know of, of obsession to do it. To, oh, I want to get back, man. Look, look at these guys. They're they're rocking it. I want to rock it too, you know. And once things started to lift up, um, um, Nate uh, Nate gave me finally gave me the uh, he was able to give me the opportunity to DJ 
in his in his socials because he had uh he had Rajel he he has D, uh, Rajel, D, uh, DJ Rajel DJ and and then uh and and other and others as well from LA and then he'll he'll have me part of the rotation yeah so and then that first time was rough because I'm going back I'm getting back into DJ so the computer was not right stuff but but Nate was so nice to me man like usually I'm used to like event organizers some event organizers getting mad at me and panicking if something doesn't work you know yeah and it's something it's sometimes it's something stupid that resolves quick but this time it was like I was like my computer wasn't sinking into his controller and oh oh my god what am I gonna do <laughs> and, and the event and the, and the event already started too yeah 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 Nate was so nice to me like he did not like flip out or anything. he was like helping me with the computer he was like going he was like and i was sitting there amazed like this guy's not mad it's, it's already 30 minutes in the event this guy has not choked me yet you know <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> Nate is a pretty straight guy but not too many people there because not too many people probably approach him but when you approach him that guy has a good heart man no he's he's he's, he's great he's straight up yeah. You know, and and everybody has their their issues in the past. Everybody has their mis. I have them, you have them. Everybody has. Them. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. Sadly, we in this business, you're gonna misunderstand, and and you know stuff happens. You know yeah. that that happened to me with Christian. You know, me and Christian had a falling out and stuff, mm. but that doesn't mean you know I gotta hate him. You know, right. it's all, all business. Right. You gotta take the emotional out of the way and look at it as business and you know so and, and and i like nate for that he's very straightforward with that straightforward. he's just yeah. business and yeah. he i never had an issue with him um and i'm not saying you know you know i don't know whoever he had problems with or stuff like that you know you know he he's a he's even admitted to me that that you know he's done stuff in the past everybody has man nobody's perfect you know but uh I believe also in, in giving another chance to people, man, because we grow, we evolve, yeah, you well, know, that, we, that, we that, learn. That, that's the other thing, though. But sometimes people make up shit, man, because just because the guy's on top, you know what I mean? Some people being, you know, and until you actually get to know the person, it's like, that's a different story from what I heard. You and know this is, I mean? this is, and this is what, the, what you just said. This yeah. is interesting. Now, me being all over, up and down Las Vegas. I'm starting to see like oh, yeah. <laughs> the the realities, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um and some people just they're too they're just they're just too emotional about it, you know, just especially especially you because when it comes to social media, uh, uh your marketing is good because you got audiences and so, you know, people can't help it cuz the other DJs look. To be honest with you, you're the only DJ I know in Las Vegas. Why? How do I know that? Well, well, you're friends of mine, and so you told me you're in Las Vegas. Even if I didn't know you, I always see you in the social media. You're the only DJ in social media that I see from Las Vegas. There's a lot of them out here. It's just the... So I learned this in Florida, what I'm doing. So it's not really the DJ, the Las Vegas DJ culture fault, because out here is a way of life. Out here in Las Vegas, it's Absolutely. a job it's a serious job you get yeah. paid just like a job yeah it's and, and that's that's my situation as well I, I i actually work i work for a company a dj company that pays me every month I for all the gigs that i do you know so it's it's like a job like serious job you have to get there on time yeah. make sure you're there so you can get your money yeah. you know and then on the and then on the sides i do you know i, I also you can also do your own deals and Sure. And, and keep everything balanced, which yeah. it's it's very hard here in Vegas because a lot is going on here. I bet a lot. I you bet. know, I I see. You know, eh, 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 I I wish I could post a, a flyer with all my schedule, but I can't because it's yeah, just gonna yeah. go. It's just gonna continue on, continue because exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm yeah. for I'm, the next four months. I already know. You know, it's I already have all this stuff booked, and yeah. plus the, the social, the dancing stuff, and yeah. all that. So it's it's very hardcore out here. It's a way of life. The DJs out here, especially the the big ones that I talk to out here that are they've been here for years, they tell me, I like what you're doing. I never seen a DJ do what you do. That's I never I, I never dealt with this. Like they they 
not in a bad way they like confuse like wow you are marketing yourself and that's oh, helping fresh. our business that's yeah, helping yeah. our business a lot and it's not again it's not their fault because they just you know they they're happy to have a gig out yeah. here because out here you you got to make money and the main the main uh economy here is is uh entertainment entertainment, yeah. entertainment. you're a dancer you make money out here because uh the the agencies that that are out there here in vegas like the ones i work with and all that they also have dancers in their in their lineup you know they have people or if you have a band you know you can have your band get hired to these events so it's not just djs you know but it's a way of life entertainment here is a way of life yeah and it's a short you know for those djs that are in the small towns bro out here is let me tell you is be happy and appreciate your small town yeah. you know because you don't have much competition and you don't oh, have yeah. so you're so you're good you, you're able to do your own you express yourself and have your crowd because the crowd this is our local crowd is small town so you're gonna look great you know appreciate that cherish that because these big cities bro like la new york las vegas which i am learning and it hasn't been easy to get all this you know i had to I had to go behind, I had to go, I had to negotiate with corporate people, I had to negotiate with, you know, it, it's, it's a lot, it's very overwhelming. I mean, tonight, tonight is the only, it's, it's for a long time, it's my off, off relax time. Tomorrow I'm back at it again, yeah. it's Saturday, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff I haven't, I don't promote because it's like private events too that I do, right. Right. and then, and then some clubs don't allow me to promote their stuff like Dria, like Dryas and the and the the day, the the pool, the pool parties during the day in some hotels. Caesar, Caesar, the people in the corporate and Caesar Palace uh corporation, they don't sometimes they just don't want you to post anything because sometimes they'll have a little John there. And, yeah. and there's a there's a no camera, there's a no camera policy. Well, I mean, they, they don't want you to promote because number one, they don't need you to promote. You know what I mean? Exactly. If they don't need they, you to promote, and and there's um. They have a marketing machine copyright. on their own. You know. <laughs> yeah, copyright. A lot of copyright. They yeah. have to be careful yeah. out here. Yeah. So that's why I. That's why when I do my promotion, I do it the way I'm doing it, because that protects me. Like that's my that's my IP, that's my business. So yeah. and 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 they notice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They also notice that stuff. So it's one thing that you're doing now that I like is look, you're in the jungle, meaning to probably the biggest jungle you have is that it's one of the entertainment, you know, Bro. capital of the world, you know. And with that, whenever you have a gig, you have the most unpredictable customers in the world because you you see all kinds of people from all over the world coming. And so therefore you're in a way, I envy you because it does sharpen your skill as a DJ. Absolutely. And it sharpens more my social stuff, like the social dancing stuff. It yeah. gives me a new perspective on, you know, and I know a lot of DJs can relate with that because a lot, you know, a lot of the, we're lucky in the dance scene, of, at least yeah. in the United States. Yeah, because our customers are predictable. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the dancers in the United States have, you know, the hottest DJs most of the hottest DJs. So we know, you know, we, we, we're able to adapt, most of us, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. So, oh, and to answer the question, so you asked me the question earlier to um, how, how being such in a short time here in Vegas, I was yeah. able to, yeah, I didn't, sorry, yeah, I just yeah, wanted yeah. to give you guys the context right. before I jumped, I jumped the gun. Right. Um, so when I got here in, in Vegas, you know, I just, you just have to, so, you know, you hear this cliche that if you want something, you just have to go for it, right? It's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. I just went for it. And a lot of situations are <laughs> scary. You know, like you, you deal with people that you never thought you would deal with. You, you, or, or you, or you go into situations, you, dear God, it's going to be a great embarrassment to do. You know, I was, a, I was willing to do all that for what I wanted. I wanted to because I love salsa bachata, but I want to do more. I want to sharpen. I'm a man that likes to sharpen his skills, and I have to, you know. I I, I just really wanted to get into the house scene. Yeah, I want yeah, to get yeah, into yeah. the hip hop scene. Right. To the open format, 
um, because that's the big market here in Las Vegas, you know, Absolutely. so, yeah. you know, there's, 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 there's social, the thing about the social dance scene here, which a lot of, this is, this is a popular opinion in the scene in the United States. Um, Las Vegas scene is kind of like unknown, really. If, if people are not here, they're not going to know no. that there's, there's one, no. yeah. um, the scene here, the problem with the scene here in Las Vegas, which I learned, um, Obviously, Rhythms has the biggest studio and they have everybody goes there. Right. That's where I see everybody go. Right. Um, but 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 the rest of the the rest of the events that happen, everything is pockets of people. Yeah. So there's a whole little small world here. There's a whole little small world there. And I noticed that as I go to the other studios, um, Naiboa, they have their people and it's their own little world. I go to Jordan's great studio, by the way, if you guys come out here to vegas and you guys have for some reason an itch to learn on to or to learn more go to go to um go to uh jimmy and paula at jordan yeah, but, but this are this Fantastic. are all studios right brother it's a, they're they're not nightclub. yeah they're, they're all studios no 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 they're not nightclub. I'm, uh, yeah i'm talking about like the, how the dance scene is here yeah. in vegas yeah they um it's it's very it's very pocket so it's very hard it's not like in jacksonville i'll throw a, a party and everybody from those studios will come. In Orlando, I throw a party, and everybody from the studios will come. And, and LA, as I noticed online, at least that's what ha that's the situation too. Because you know they all, I guess they share. I don't know. LA. I guess they else. share people. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's something else. LA. But else. but my point my point is that the crowd knows that something's going on here. Yep. And they all go. Here in Vegas, there's a lot going on in different different things going on at all times but you know not, not too many people know about it and not too many people know about it and the social and the cr social crowd here is small <laughs> I, bet. I bet like the ones that actually go out yeah yeah it's small yeah. everybody else you know they wait until nate social yeah this is this is why i have that. a hard time i have a hard time whenever people ask me and message me on facebook like hey i'm in vegas where do i go to socials like Yep. And I apologize for all those people that message. I, I get those messages a lot um, to, who happen to come on a weekend that there's nothing social that's going on. <laughs> yeah. And I can't. I'm like, I'm sorry, you know, and it's because there's just so much competition, like the competition here. I think it is, it's, it's going to match New York, which I'll find out once I go over there. I'm going to go over there on the 22nd of July. Um, I'm going to find out. Uh, for for central movement i think yeah i'm gonna find out how you know how crazy oh you're gonna find how, out. how much people you know so yeah. it, so La, so las vegas i can like I'm, I'm gonna dare to say it's, it's almost the same as the craziness of new york when there's so much events going on just just a little bit just, just a, a little, little bit. bit it's just that it's just that new york are clickish oh okay well, I, I so don't they know. have their own clicks you know uh so okay and, and, so okay so that's what's going on here it's okay. the same situation right. so there's there's a lot there's a lot you know and then there's rivalry too that's what's it, it makes me sad to see it that's what's holding back las vegas because las vegas can be so much more I let me just you. tell you something san francisco bay area is not like that you that's know, good that's we great. can have we can have three events in one night in the same city and they're all packed that's awesome yeah. see and, and that and that's great and i heard about that in new york too they would have three events at the same time and they're all packed and it's good but it is a great it is a big city so that's <laughs> but true. yeah 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 that's and in san francisco too you yeah. know and uh but here vegas is just a valley yeah. and it's it's north Las, everything that so from the middle of las vegas to the edge is 20 minutes yeah. So yeah, so yeah. that's how big, you know, 20 minutes in circumference for my math, <laughs> mathematic mathematicians out there. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. that's Vegas. Vegas yeah. is a valley. And I can go I, I go to Nate Studio, it's 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 10 minutes. Yeah. I, I go it's, to uh, the strip. 15, I go to the strip. It's 15. about 15, 20 minutes from the Mirage with the uh, rhythm studio, Nate's uh it's it's yeah. yeah. It's it's everything's close like that. Yeah. You know, everything is 20 minutes. The farthest you can go here is if you from the other edge of Vegas to the other edge, it's going to take you 30 minutes. By the so way, it's a very small, it's a very small condensed city. 
the with, thing the entertain- is, with the entertainment in the middle. I visited, you know, I know that, you know, we, we saw each other like last week, uh, hang out on the Mirage, had the best steak, by the way, but uh, mm, delicious. You know, it was it was great, man. It was and, good. It was good. He, he treated me for, for a big steak, guys, and you don't want to know how much that was. But anyway, <laughs> you're talking Vegas, man, inside a hotel. Those are fucking expensive style. But absolutely, so I went to Nate's studio for the first time. I've I've only I've only seen it when he was just building it from scratch. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I saw the pictures in social media and all of that stuff. So mm-hmm. I went there because I was. I'm I'm like shopping for a pre-party if we ever have a pre-party, you know. And so let me look at Nate's thing because he's a good friend of mine. We I I featured him in podcasts many times, and I looked at it. I was like, okay, so you know, he showed me around. He showed me the the uh, the room there, the room here, and it's a studio. Some people are teaching class. He showed me the lobby and everything. And here I am thinking, although I was saying. Oh, that's nice. This is good. That's really nice. Here I am saying, mm, I don't know if the pre-party is good here, you know. And then it's like, okay, so that we're done, right? And all of a sudden, oh, I forgot to show you the event center. I was like, there's an, <laughs> there's an event center. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? There's an event center. So we went across. You know, there's the bathroom here. So we went across that. And he opened it up, and holy shit, right? <laughs> See why everybody goes there? Every studio goes there? That's I what... mean, you're talking about a combination of studio, nightclub, and a fucking concert play, because there's a stage. and Full stage. And, and you're talking about a high-tech, latest tech technology when it comes to speakers, everything. you got full service of alcohol in the bar. Are you freaking kidding me? Yes. That's that's the rhythm studio. It shouldn't be called studio, but damn, I was. It's it's, it's a studio. A lot of dancing going on still like, going in there. He yeah, laughed yeah, at yeah. me. It's like, hey Rodney, you thought that was it, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not. No, no. It's it's three. It's three dance dance rooms and and then the main event center. And that's the, the event center. Yeah. The beauty. It's a beautiful beauty. place. I remember the first time. So he's got all the lighting, the stage lighting too. Are you freaking kidding me, <laughs> bro? When I went there the first time, I was like, you know, Nate's like, okay, come back at a certain time. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. And I walk in. First, I see the building. Right. I'm like, I'm like, holy crap! Is this all his? He, like, is he serious? From scratch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go in. And he's like, oh yeah, I just set up up there. Whole DJ booth, stage, lights. <laughs> I'm looking at this place like, whoa, <laughs> what is this? Whoa, you know, yeah. and and. Yeah, you're good. That's that's where you're DJ right there. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. Welcome to Vegas, you know. <laughs> he told me the price where you know he charged people when they rent that building. Now, as you know, because he's a good friend of mine, he's like, yeah, I'll give I'll give you a discount and everything. But here I am, still thinking of a price because, you know, I will give him the lowest price. But then I look at the freaking slick like. I'm even embarrassed to even tell him how much I can afford. You know what I mean? <laughs> because of the beauty of the of the venue, you know. <laughs> yeah. One thing, one thing though, Nate loves dancing. He loves the culture. He loves the that, Latin yeah. music and he he'll do he'll he'll make it work. You well, know, here's when, one yeah. thing that I notice about this studio. You can tell a place that's built from scratch, you can tell that the one who built it is a freaking dancer. Know what I mean? Because yeah. Because all of your need as a dancer is there. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's built by if a, if if a dancer is given some plans to design a studio, that's Nate's studio, the, yeah. the rhythm studio. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty much catered to dancing, and they do the weddings there. I, like, oh yeah. I, I have a wedding on Saturday there. You know, oh, they, he does all kinds of stuff there. You know what I'm saying? Dude, so I, I mean so. that. That thing is badass. I mean that that particular room right there. That and it has a different entrance, by the way, which is really cool. Yeah, That's there's two. Of, there's two of them. <laughs> yeah, and and he has a balcony too. So if, <laughs> oh, yeah. if, you're, yeah. if it's too hot, if you're tired, you, you know, go me outside the balcony, to the dude. lounge. Yeah, <laughs> it has a lounge outside. You know. No, what I was so impressed is that he had that stage, and he had those lighting. I mean, these are like for shows. The lighting, the show lighting, those are like 
those are expensive dude <laughs> yeah yeah no 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 it's it's a it's a great studio and and he he you know he's very proud of it and that's very you know no, i'm very I'm, proud of I, it as a as a dancer from the community and as a promoter i am very proud of nate to do that because not too many dancers have the success that he has uh, and to to do that to give back and provide it for our very minuscule community uh he deserves some praise for that and 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 i'm glad that he does that there no and i'm pretty much forever grateful for the opportunity he, he gives me i mean i'm the only local dj that's djing there for the social community yeah and and he has me in rotation with other great djs which is always fantastic to be you know part of that um and and it's it's, it's such an honor to be able to you know represent uh, at least as, as long as i'm here in vegas represent the locals out here yeah you know and and and, and be able to you know dj as a las vegas dj yeah you know and and, and his socials so it, it's fantastic it's always a great time i love it and it's a good it's a good time if you're ever out here you ever happen to fall in to a a rhythm Latin night social go go because everybody in vegas is going to everybody local in vegas is going to be there i would like to see it even if i don't have any event yeah vegas. it's it's, fun, it's fantastic it, it, it gets it, it gets packed and, 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 i mean and then and then it's been it's been popular lately as well um lucky for me it's been getting popular too when i go so that's i good. mean it's 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 a very fun night you know everybody yeah. has a great time and it's, it's it's good stuff i mean i was planning to i'm still planning to do a pre-party there but i cannot decide yet at this point of the game because it's too early when i'm looking at the ticket ticket sales if there's enough attendance in my opinion to to host it there uh, uh i don't mind letting nate know to host it there but if i think that it's not going to be a good turnout i would even be embarrassed to do it there you know what i mean no it, it should it should be a good turnout because uh i mean obviously i'm going to spread the word and we, we're all going to spread the word together and all that um and there's there's people out here that are there's a lot of attention on the mega bachata as well good. um a lot of people especially the locals here are very excited um so i don't i don't see it as a problem as as, as long as it's you know announced early and, and yeah mentioned just like you know just like everything else and you know you know this stuff you know and by the way just fyi because some people would think promoters are in competition nate is 100 percent very supportive of my event in vegas yeah yeah absolutely yeah he's he's he, he's he, i i've really haven't seen him like not support yeah. i mean but that's just my perspective you know i mean don't i don't know who's watching don't get mad <laughs> don't get mad you know but anyway I mean, I, I, yeah boy are you excited about the mirage we're doing the mega at the freaking iconic mirage absolutely it's one of my favorite hotels that i like to walk around in um there's a zoo Oh yeah, in the in the freaking hotel is oh, by yeah. the pool, so they have white tigers and tigers not in there. Mention, so not to mention the aquarium, right? <laughs> and they also have the aquarium. Yeah. Uh, the elevators are so the elevators where you go to the rooms. Yeah. Are in between the casino and mall. There's Correct. a mall in there, ladies. Correct. There is a mall, and there's <laughs> stores. There's everything that you need is gonna be in there, and it's you have to go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we had we had to go through the casino. The mall. Yeah. You still have the, the volcano. The you still have the volcano, right? Yeah, the volcano's there. It's a spectacular show. Um, sad that it's gonna go, but uh, Hard Rock bought the rights for Mirage, right? Am I correct? I think they got that's... lucky, in my opinion, that that Hard Rock bought the whole score. Uh, the the demolition of the volcano, it's still uh, in the uh, deliberation part because the community is against it. The company wants to change it to a gigantic guitar, as you know, but now they're deliberating. But I know that the schedule of the renovations would be two weeks after the festival. So that would be in October. So, so yeah, there's a chance. There's a chance to enjoy it before it To the goes viewers away. right there, if you're going to go to Vegas with us, it is your last chance to see the Mirage as the Mirage because october by that next month and next year when we go back there it's not going to be the mirage anymore it's going to be called hard rock 
Yeah, Hard Rock is rebranding. They already have the Guitar Hotel in Miami. They're trying yeah. to do the same concept out here. So that's, you know, they, they bought, yeah, they bought that location and that's, that's what's going to replace it. It's going to look fantastic. And remember, you know why they're doing that. You know, Formula One's coming 2023. <laughs> so, you know, they're, everything's getting revamped. Yeah, in Las Vegas say, for is. the yeah for that next event coming up next year. So it's just that the mirage shocked me because I never stayed this, there before, and when I stayed, I, I was actually surprised how good it is. It's fantastic. Um, yeah. Everybody's gonna f enjoy this location because not only is a beautiful, very green tropical yeah location yeah. Not only that, it's right in the middle of the very nice part of the strip. So you, you saw the see pool. The pool is yeah. there. It's a great pool, and Fantastic you also pool. saw you also saw the, saw the, uh, the the size of the ballroom. Yeah, oh, those that ballroom is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I walked. You know, I've been all the, to all the hotels, and I and I've been into the Mirage several times. I but I never walked that part where the ballrooms are at. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there was a concert going on there in there, right? Yeah, there we was had, a concert. Was a, yeah, we went, dude. That was yeah, that's that was huge. awesome, man. That's a. Uh, I think two congresses at the same time you can do it. <laughs> I think so. I think it's so it's pretty it's, big. It's pretty big. Pretty amazing. And and when it comes to it's a centralized location because it's on the strip. But if you want to take the what do you call that train that the the the, the, the public they train? got they, they they got the Disney style uh, little train. Yeah. little train yeah that they take but one but one takes you on one side of the strip and then you have to cross the street right. to take another one that right. You know, or takes the you. other one, there is a, there is another train there that goes straight to the Treasure Island back and forth. Yeah, it goes from Treasure Island to yeah. the Cosmopolitan. Right, it right. stops at the Cosmopolitan. Cosmo, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, you're 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 all gonna be able to uh, explore the strip because it's right, it's literally almost right in the middle. It's next to the Caesar's Palace. Yeah. It's next to Treasure Island. It's across the street from the Encore and Wynn and the uh, Venetian. And Encore in uh, 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 what is it? Venetian. The Venetian, yeah, the Venetian. Pala is that Palazzo Palacio Hotel or something? Palazzo, yeah, it's it's Palazzo Venetian. It has the boats. It has those uh, gondolas inside inside the mall. So everything is everything. Is I there. mean, not, I mean, the hotel is there's a lot to oh, do. It's awesome. In the hotel. I love the hotel. I, I just and... looked at. By the way, guys, before Hard Rock, it is owned by MGM, so you could see a lot of MGM signatures there. <laughs> oh yeah absolutely yeah they it's caesars and mgm yeah they 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 own they control yeah. all of that um it's it's a fantastic place it's it's you know i mean i'm very glad that you you chose the mirage because it has it's, it's just have it has its uniqueness in it well and, you already and, you already know that the, the behind the scenes planning here we thought we're gonna go to luxor as you know right we yes. thought we were going to be at Luxor, and that's another good hotel. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it was. It, it is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> uh, it needs some renovation. That's for sure. But <laughs> that's what everyone is saying, at least. But I love their pool. Their pool is probably the biggest of them all. It it's, is. It is surrounded like this, right? But compared to the Mirage, is that's true. The Mirage is very tropical. Yeah. 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 The 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 Luxor is big, but it was it's like. Well, it's like Egypt. It's it's inspired by Egypt. That's why you don't see trees as much. Inspired by Egypt, and it smells yeah. like weed. It smells like weed. So that would that'd be another problem, too. I mean, most of the stuff in Vegas smells like weed, but it's pretty bad behind the lobster. You know, so, yeah, everybody will be high in bachata in there. Like, <laughs> that's bachata high. But anyway, so. Jose, it's been great talking to you, and, and, and it, it was great hanging out with you in Vegas, by the way. There might be a tendency that I'll be visiting Vegas off and on before the festival as you know and then during the festival tony and i are gonna go there early we'll probably go there by tuesday you know uh, because he's got some australians with them taking them to arizona uh and then after that they're probably gonna do a private party somewhere i don't know but you know we're gonna be there early for sure uh and uh i think it's gonna be a great thanks for your support i thank you for the djing services uh uh you know, uh, that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to when we have uh, DJ Suave Beats there. 
our, our sensual modern room, we don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> he, he, he's going to he's gonna make it lit. You know? mm, there's going to be a lot of uh, what yeah. happens in Vegas stays in Vegas situations oh. going on <laughs> in both rooms. In both rooms. In both and rooms. by the way, guys, this is not San Francisco or Hawaii where we can only stay a certain few hours. We're going to party until 6 a.m. Whatever, you know. Really? Until 6? That's until it? Six, brother. <laughs> Until six, we keep going 24 <laughs> hours, they never stop here. Man, I mean, we, we can even stop. party until nine if you like it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> man, hey, it's that's that's what we do, man. That's what we do out here. It's just 24 7. Uh, I want to get, I want to give a quick a couple shout outs. Um, Go ahead. I want to give a shout out to uh, uh, Bachata Addicts in Orlando, uh, Tammy Pantelian. She is holding the fork down there in Orlando with a lot of the other promoters down there. Yeah. Um, they have a fan, Orlando has one of the best scenes out in the United States and it's it's a blessing for everybody that's out there to be able to enjoy you know support your studios support your events out there they're working very hard for you you know what I'm saying and yeah. I want to also, also uh, give a shout out to um, uh, people's in Arizona you know and the, the, a lot of central bachateros over there and, and sarceros too uh, instructors down there on both sides are working very hard to teach you techniques and and for you guys to enjoy and have great memories, you know what I'm saying? And then um, all my all my promoters here in Las Vegas and all my partners and all all the club owners and, and dance friends, uh, yeah. I thank you all for your support. And I'm going to continue to work hard for what I love out here. Uh, I love what I'm doing out here. And for those who visit, by all means, message me if you're in town and we'll give you the best guidance. Um, a lot of there's a lot of studios out here is just to keep up with yeah. what's going on you know you just give us a just give me a little time to look into what's happening and then i can give you a great sense of direction of if you want to dance well i'll recommend you the studio or if you want to do something else different i can also help you with that so by all means you know vegas is a is an amazing experience so it's gonna be you know you guys are gonna have a lot of fun and feel free to to let me know if you're in town you know and uh by the well. way shout out to uh anna also from central movement yes uh, that was my next <laughs> that was my next one right there yeah. <laughs> who is our big supporter for the mega bachata fest they're coming Absolutely. to las vegas the whole central movement is coming to las vegas uh patrick johanna pierre and alejandra uh and the people from the east coast you know fantastic yeah they 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 have uh offered me a great opportunity to do their friday nights in in new york the roof chata yeah, I, I think Dude, it is. Every uh, time I say that name, Roof Chata, it's like, are they talking about me? Sounds like me. <laughs> I think, I think that, I think that one is the Orlando one. That's okay. the, that's the, the one on top of the Amway. Roof Chata, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but he, she also has one in, uh, on Wednesdays in New York, and then she yeah. has a Friday one. Now that's the one I'm gonna be doing with DJ Willie. Um, me and DJ Willie, we're gonna throw down up there. It's gonna Ooh. be my first time in New York. Yeah, and it's gonna be my first time uh, doing uh, any work with uh, Central Movement and, and Anna. She's been a great, she's been a great, great, great person with me. She Anna's a great I, person. She's also like Nate. She's straightforward, bro. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. She's yeah. she's straightforward. The team are, are doing a fantastic job out there. Um, I think they're having their Miami Paradise uh, Festival next week. Uh, I think it I is. I think that's uh, July, right? I think. I think. Or I, June. I haven't. Or June. I gotta get back. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta get on Facebook and look because Sarah, I, I, Sarah, I and uh, Marco, Marco and Sarah are there. Daniel and Desiree are there, and other sensual artists. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be a banger. Yeah. Uh, my boy, my boy Douglas, uh, DJ, uh, was it Dougie Fresh? Dougie. <laughs> Dougie oh, Fresh. Douglas. I love Douglas, man. The troll yeah, king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's gonna be over there trolling. I mean, DJing it, you know. Hey. <laughs> oh, dude, he's gonna be in Las Vegas. He's gonna be in Mega Bachata Fest. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I'm, I'm looking forward to that, man. I, I, you know, I always interact with him, and I enjoy his 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 comments. You know, I can relate very much with with oh, his he, stuff. That's so, what I like about. Uh, he, he's I, he's great. I work with him in San Diego uh, when I had a bachata. The expo there uh, that's great he's that's one great, of the yeah. funniest guy i know <laughs> yeah. awesome man and you know and and, and he's he's also with uh, alejandra fonta who i know since the orlando days because she was originally from orlando as and well by the way they have a big team 
Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. They they have they have they have a studio and everything. It's, it's, oh yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, they're, doing, they're doing great. They're doing great. I still so, like yeah, to I... go to Denver. I, I, you know, some of my friends invited me to Denver. Uh, I'll probably I've never been, so I'll probably go visit one of the states. Yeah, it look uh, the Denver event looks looks great, man. I mean, I, I haven't gone and stuff, but it looks it looks it looks fantastic. It looks very hype. So well, that I one is that one is nice go there during summer. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah I, I, appre- I appreciate everybody that supports me and all I that. Appreciate and, uh, you, bro. Yeah. And I'll see I'll see you guys in New York and, and next month. And then we're gonna keep 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 looking at our profiles, keep keep following uh Ro- yep. Rochada and keep following me for more news. What's your uh, what's your Facebook profile? Uh Facebook is just pretty much suave beats. Yeah, you're gonna find it. You're gonna it's you're gonna see it. So it beats and then uh um, at, um, at suave beats you could find it right in yeah. pretty much yeah and then on uh, instagram the same thing suave beats as well um and yeah it's, it's just follows a lot a lot is happening a lot a we, lot. Have, we haven't even talked about a, a lot more so it's just surge following. It's, it's right after the pandemic so there's a surge right now yeah it's a huge surge so there's yeah. there's way more going on so Keep keep following Rochada. If you if you if you're able to follow me, keep following me as well. I'm gonna you know I post everything that I, that's going on as and well. DJ uh, the, the Suave also plays. Is it once a month at World Salsa Radio or something or what? So World Salsa Radio right now I'm taking a break because okay. of a, of the surge of events that's happening. Oh, I see. I am I am still yeah I am still with uh, yeah. Th- thanks for bringing that up. I yeah. almost forgot. Felipe is gonna kill me. Uh, so. <laughs> So uh no yes you, you guys go to worldsalsaradio.com um there's a lot of broadcasters a lot of DJs in there that are having yeah. shows every week and they they throw down some good material some good music so if you're ever stressed or you're at home cleaning or something go online to worldsalsaradio.com and listen to our talented DJ staff okay. that is in there that are killing it I'm going to have a show I'm going to have a new show soon in World Salsa Radio Okay. Um, it's just right now I'm organizing the interviews because uh, I'm going to open the new show. It's going to be a different day of the week. Yeah. Um, different name. Because I had two shows before. Yeah. Um, and it was two different. Uh, it was Guaguancología, which was salsa from the 70s. Yeah. And then um, and then Areto, uh, salsa and bachata, which was just salsa and bachata, new salsas and, and bachata right. mixing. But right. now I'm going to combine those shows together. Nice. Uh, but in order to start back up again in World Salsa Radio, I, I have some interviews planned. And I'm just waiting for the artists to confirm and to have their to have their schedule clear so I can do the interview. And yeah. I'm going to start the show just like that. So keep um, keep keep uh, following World Salsa Radio and stuff, and you're going to see all those updates as well. So, but follow, but by all means, there's a lot of talent in there, and there's Lots. a lot from yeah. all over the world. So and, not to me, they, not to mention the the music that you guys play. The you music's know, fantastic. Really, yeah, a really, really, really great selections there. But uh, guys, uh, if you haven't subscribed to this uh, cast yet, it's right down below in the red. Uh, subscribe, just click. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna have SG Saman from Turkey, uh, and then next week I'm gonna have Tanya. I'm gonna have Alimana, and then I'm gonna have Brenda Lou. And then I'm gonna take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Breaks are good. Breaks are good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Um, it's it's been fun, man. It's been I, we've been over an hour. That's how that's that's wow. how I do my podcast. It's very conversational. It's not a it's not a fucking interrogation interview questions. It's just all conversational. That's that's how I'd like to do it in podcasts. And we hold we held nothing back, as you know. And that's why I get I get lots of views. Uh, well, I am I probably the it. only I am probably the only uh, cast that gets views when it comes to interviews. Uh, uh, and we get really good views. So thank you, Jose. Uh, I will see you soon in Vegas, brother. All right. Yeah, I'll see you soon. And thank you for all for listening in. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to be in your podcast, Rod. All right, brother. Bye for now. All right. Bye. Blessings.